Welcome home, Lee. Hey, Heidi. Thanks for arranging everything. You're welcome. Where's the car I sent for you? It's been 10 years. I felt like walking. <laughs> it's a nice town to come home to. I hope so. The house hasn't changed a bit. Yeah. Still stuck in the 70s. <laughs> Granddad liked to save his money. I'm so sorry about his passing. Anyway, um, do you hear anything about the job? Yes, his name is Joe Nelson. He's a good friend of mine. He says you can start whenever you like. You sure you want to take some time? You don't need the money. No, but I need the routine. Hmm. Well, let's go over the estate, because I need to sit down. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> let's do that. So, when do you do? A couple of weeks. Tina. Have you seen Joe? Yeah, he's back in the deli. Why? The guy's been after me all day. So you think standing around here is a good idea? Well, I just want to see my girl. It's the only time you have for me anyway. College is a lot of work, Eric. I'm just saying. You better hope Joe doesn't see you. I don't care. <laughs> Sounds like he's giving my job to that new guy anyway. You don't know that, Eric. I do a good job for him. Like standing here? At least go to the break room. Am I going to see you tonight? I have a term paper due. All right. But you owe me big time. Sending Lee Ferguson back? All the way back. He's in the deli. Thanks. Mr. Nelson. Lee. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, I just want to stop by and introduce myself. Good. Yeah. Heidi's told me all about you. Glad you decided to stop in. I really appreciate this opportunity, Mr. Nelson. Hey. Let's get one thing straight right off the bat. You come to work for me, you call me Joe. Fair enough. So, what do you see? I'm sorry? When you look around, what do you see? Of 
groceries? It's a new beginning, Lee. When you come to work, you check your past at the door. I can do that. All right. How do you feel about produce? I eat it. Come on, I'll show you around. Been busy down there every day, man. Yeah. <laughs> my hands down around. Right. Hey, uh, both of you guys supposed to be taking a break right now? No, I'm just looking for my box cutter. Uh huh. I'd like you to meet Lee Ferguson. This is Earl. Hey, nice to meet you. How you doing? Hey, Joe's a good guy, man. <laughs> this is Eric. Lee's gonna be working produce. So you're the guy taking my job. He isn't taking anything, Eric. I'm giving him your job. I'm not looking to step on any toes here. Too late for that, huh? You know what? Go back to work, Eric. Man, don't worry about him. He ain't always like this. Yeah, he is. I'm getting tired of it. Fine. Hey, nice to meet you. Don't worry about Eric. He's got a big mouth. I don't have to do produce. Uh, produce is yours, Lee. That's the way I want it. Besides, I like to rattle Eric's cage now and again anyway. So, when were you thinking of starting? Figured Monday? Uh, Saturday's our busiest day. Saturday's fine. All right. Lee, I think this is going to work out nicely. Let's go see Tina about that paperwork. So Joe's got you bringing in cards too, huh? Man, it kills me. What? Cause he'll never ask Eric to get the cards. I'm always the one that's got to do it. And now you're the new guy, you got to do it too. Well, you should ask Eric. Right. I mean, it's just easier to do it myself. You should say something to him. Man, I've tried. I'll treat you better. Lee, that's enough. Lee, that's enough. Lee, out. Lee, I'm all. I'm all. I'm all right. I'm all. Are you okay? I think so. Do you know him? He's my ex-husband. You're hurt. You should come inside and let someone take you to the hospital. You need to get that x-rayed. Maybe I should. Here. Can you please do your job? I'm sorry, what was that? The carts. Making Earl go out and get the carts is not right. Well, he hasn't said anything to me. I guess that's what I'm doing now. How's that your business? All I'm saying is we should all do our fair share. Fair share? What are you, super employee? Oh, there he is. Oh, man, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen, right? So the first minute, he's just standing next to me, right? And the next, he's just scraping the windshield with dude's face. You aren't hurt, are you? I'm fine. Oh, how's that woman? Joe took her to the hospital to get x-rays. So Lee, did you learn to fight like that in prison? Eric. What? You guys have a good night.
morning. Morning. I'm Katie. I'm the woman you helped last night. What can I do for you? I just wanted to come by and say thank you. Yeah? Did that last night, didn't you? I know. Just no one's ever stuck up for me like that. You gonna press charges? I am this time. Good. I really feel like I should do something for you. Yeah? Stay away from your ex-husband. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for helping. You know what? I'm sorry. That didn't come out right. I'm trying to make you mad. Not many people would have stepped in the way you did. Yeah, well, I guess you're lucky that the store ran out of shopping carts. I like to think I was being watched over. What do you mean? Like, like God? Mm -hmm. Really? Let me ask you a question. Where was your God when your ex-husband attacked you? Watching. Right. And I was the one in the parking lot to do it. And I thank God for that. How's the wrist? Just a mild sprain. Good. I mean, that's all it was. That's all it was. So, um, how'd you find me? I asked Joe. Listen, uh, thank you for stopping by. I'll let you get back to work. Thanks again. Whoa. Would you take free movie rentals? I run a video store in town. Would you at least accept free movies? Sure. Yeah. Free movies would be great. Okay. Well, I hope to see you soon. Okay. Hey, Earl. Yeah, Tina, what's up? Can I get a ride in the morning? Yeah, sure. What, your car messed up again? I gotta take it into the shop tonight. No, you need to get a new car. <laughs> Look, I'd ask Eric, but you know how reliable he is in the morning. Yeah, you got that right. Look, I'll pick you up in the morning, all right? Hey, don't be late. Thanks. I'm gonna go, Katie. Is anyone left? Uh, there's one guy left. Do you want me to stay? No, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, have a good night. You too. Thanks. Good choice. Hello. Hi. I didn't think I'd see you this soon. Uh, I didn't want you to think that your offer was unappreciated. <sighs> Not much of an offer. Oh, no, you kidding? This is a great selection of westerns. I used to watch all these with my grandfather. So what's your favorite? I don't know if I have one. You mind if I give you a few of my favorites and you can tell me what you think? Oh, I like that. OK, what's your preference, black and white or color? Black and white. Okay. There you go. These should get you started. Thanks. Um, hey, would you mind sticking around while I lock up? No, I'd, I'd be glad to. Okay. You always lock up by yourself? Only on weekdays. Kenneth closes on the weekends. You don't get nervous? Nah, it's a nice town. Hey, Lee, I have a question for you, and um, I really need you to be honest with me about this. Do you think that John Wayne was a better soldier or a better cowboy? 
I don't know. What do you think? Oh, no. You first. I'd say he was a better soldier. <sighs> we were having such a good talk. Wrong answer, huh? <sighs> I have two words for you. Fort Apache. Mm, I got six words for you. Sands of Iwo Jima. That's four words. Okay, six syllables. Well, thank you for the escort. Hey, I want to apologize for this afternoon. For what? My God comment. It was <laughs> confrontational. Apology unnecessary, but accepted. Thanks. So, you don't believe in God? I believe there's a creator. But the idea of some all-loving God who watches over us, I just pretty much think it's a myth. I mean, that's, that's, that's for me. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I should probably just say thanks for these movies and, uh, and good night. Well, let me know what you think of them. I will. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Earl, bless you. Wasn't sure if you are going to have heat last night. No, we had heat. Didn't you say your mother was going to let you move back in? Until she found out I didn't break up with Eric. Tina, hmm. is he really worth all this? I just don't want her telling me what to do. I'm 20 years old. She's your mother, Tina. She only wants what's best for you. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> no, you don't. So, how was the game last night? Coach put me on the bench again. Ah, uh, you'll get in there eventually. I hope so. You will. Hey, do me a favor. Go get me a box for the rest of these, will you? All right, Lee. Thanks. Hi, Lee. Hey, Katie. Sorry to bother you at work. Oh, you're not bothering me. It's nice to see you. Good, because uh, I kind of wanted to ask you something. Will you go to dinner with me? Now? No, this weekend. My treat. Yeah, I like that. But I'll take you to dinner. No, I asked you first. No, not this. I'll make the reservations. I'll pick you up. Okay. You're gonna help me get out of that motel. Don't you just have to break up with Eric? See, no, Earl, you're not being helpful. <laughs> Look, I can tell you right now you can't afford it. I don't wanna buy it. I wanna move in. Who owns it? Lee Ferguson. <sighs> you know, Tina, come on now. You know, you need to leave that poor guy alone. Last thing he needs is you doing whatever it is you do. You know, and Eric hates the guy enough already. I thought friends were supposed to help each other. Yeah, well, I don't want any part of it. We can go. Hey, Lee. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Really good. What's up, Lee? Hey, what's up, Earl? Well, it seems like it's a good time to ask for a favor. Oh, yeah? 
they need. My car's in the garage again, and I was wondering if you could give me a ride this week. Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, you're in a good mood. I am. I have a date. You do? Who is she? Katie Markham, the woman from the parking lot. Oh. Well, good for you. Good evening. You look great. Oh, thanks. Come on in. Can I get you something to drink? Oh, no, thanks. I'm good. Okay. Just make yourself at home. I'll be right down. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. I, I meant to tell you, you look really pretty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Can I just get something out of the way here? What's that? I am really nervous. I have not been on a date in a long time. You're nervous. My, uh, my heart's about ready to jump out of my chest. I'm so nervous. Oh, good. <laughs> I feel a little better. <laughs> uh, so, did you ever get to watch those movies? Oh, yeah. Um... I gotta be honest with you, I don't have a DVD player. Matter of fact, I don't even have a TV. Then why did you even- You know what, we should um, probably go. Okay. So here we are. Your house? Trust me, the food's amazing. I don't know, Lee. What's well, not quite what you had in mind? Not really. I thought that my romantic side would uh, impress you, not frighten you. Well, maybe we could just go somewhere a little more public. Can you hold on one minute? We're right back. We won't be alone. Unbelievable meal. What are you talking about? You didn't even touch yours. Oh, no. I've had plenty. It was delicious. 
You're full of surprises, huh? <laughs> How so? Well, you didn't strike me as the uh, cooking classical music lover. <laughs> so tell me about yourself. There's not really much to tell. I was born and raised here. And I lost my mom in a car accident when I was eight. And I was raised by my maternal grandfather. What about your dad? I didn't know him. Uh, he never married my mom. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not. He couldn't have been half the man my grandfather was. He was a fighter pilot in World War II. The man was my hero. That explains your misguided belief about John Wayne. Yes, it does. Favorite place in the world? Niagara Falls. I used to go up there every year with my grandfather. What do you like to do? Well, I read a lot. Mostly history. That's what I went to school for. Where'd you go? Stanford. Did you graduate? With a master's degree. And you work in a grocery store? Yeah. It's a long story. I'd like to hear it. Someday. So, um, where are you from? I'm from Pittsburgh. Vince is from Cleveland. And, uh, when we divorced, I moved out here. And how did you end up married to Vince? Also a long story for another time. Fair enough. A piece they're playing. It's a waltz, isn't it? You have a good ear. I studied dance when I was a kid. I love waltzes. You still remember how? Oh, I haven't in years. Vince would never dance with me. Not even at weddings. <laughs> this dance right now right now oh, I'd feel funny I wouldn't What for? My dancing abilities. I'm a little rusty. I'm sure I was stepping all over your toes. Mind if I ask you something? Sure. When we were at your house earlier, I was kind of snooping around. And I noticed that you had a lot of books on Christianity. Pretty religious, huh? I am. I've been a Christian for about two years now. What? What? You look like you want to say something. Can I ask you one question? Your religion? I thought you weren't supposed to talk about politics or religion. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. Ask away. Okay. You honestly believe that a first century teacher by the name of Jesus was actually the creator Man. Hey, you got a minute, Joe? Yeah, yeah, come on in. What's up? Oh. 
Do you know any conservative Christians? <laughs> Why? You gonna go all religious on me? No. I had a date last night with one. Yeah, I heard. The gal from the parking lot. Yeah, she's the one. Anyways, it turns out she's an evangelical. Are you attracted to her, Lee? Absolutely. You've seen her. You like being with her? Yeah, I do. I find her to be intriguing. Well, my sister-in-law is one. It's not my cup of tea, but it doesn't bother me. I can tell you about Christians. My grandmother sent money to one of those preachers on TV. You know, the one with the crazy hair. Yeah, that really narrows it down. <laughs> anyway, the guy told her that if she gave, God would make her rich. When she went through her savings, they said, put it on her credit card. So what happened? She lives with my mother now. He took it all. You, you can't judge the actions of a whole group by one isolated incident. No. Look at their leaders. That guy who ran for president, he wants to assassinate world leaders he doesn't agree with. It was one of those men of God that came up with the name Ellen DeGenerate. That's loving. Whoa! Where did you get all that? Ask her what she thinks of homosexuals. They hate them. They hate anyone who doesn't fit into their little Republican mold. Hey, have you heard from Leah? No. I thought we had a good time. I mean, you seem to. Have you tried calling him? I'm not calling him, Maria. That is way too desperate. You want to know, don't you? I mean, maybe something happened. Like what? I don't know. Mm. You were the one who had to ask him out in the first place, so maybe he's just shy. I don't know, I guess. You know, you'd think he would have found the courage in a week, though. I don't know. Just be patient. I mean, if he's as nice as the guys you say he is, he'll call. All right, and this is Do Back Monday. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I leave early tonight? How early? In about three minutes. <sighs> yeah, I can close. What's going on? Jamie is picking me up. I thought that was over. Things are a little different now. Oh, boy. Mm. Hello? Hello. I was beginning to think I wouldn't see you anymore. I know. I'm sorry. I should have called. So what brings you in? Free movies. I'm kidding. Actually, I met this fascinating woman last week, and I was hoping that I would uh, get to know her a little bit better. What do you have in mind? I just moved back in town. I was hoping she'd want to show me around. That sounds like a date. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lee. This is Kenneth. He's my uh, right-hand man. Thank you, Are Kenneth. You? Nice to meet you. What do you say? You want to be my tour guide? Oh, that's my date. Are you sure you can manage all this? Uh, yeah, I think I can handle it. Have a good night, Lee. It was nice meeting you. You too. Is he gay? He is. And you're an evangelical Christian? I am. Why? Nothing. I'm just thinking about something a friend said.
You know, I forgot how beautiful this place was in autumn. Oh, I know. I wish I'd grown up here. Feels great to be back. You know what we need to do? We need to go pick some apples. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you need to try my apple crisp. Apple crisp, huh? All right. Don't tell me you've never had apple crisp. I've had apple crisp. Plenty of times. Right. Uh, fork or spoon? Uh, fork. Do you mind if I get nosy for a minute? Oh, boy. Do you mind? Go ahead. I was downtown a couple weeks ago, and I, uh, I saw you come out of some kind of counseling office. Really? Yeah. And I know it's none of my business, but I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't curious. Let's just say that I'm still working through some of those skeletons in the closet. <laughs> skeletons, huh? I'd love to see your skeletons. Well, let's go sit down. So, tell me about your awful skeleton. I don't know if it's awful. It's embarrassing. I used to be a stripper. Yeah, that's how I met Vince. He used to come into the club and throw all his money around. Yeah, I actually thought that he would be my savior, you know, and get me out of that place. But, uh, he didn't. He loved the idea of his girlfriend being a stripper. I hated it. You know, I, I hated the club, and I hated the customers, and I hated Vince for making me do it. So how'd you get out? <laughs> the radio. The radio? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, one night after dancing, I didn't want to go home to Vince. So I was driving around in my car, and I was flipping through the radio stations, and I stopped to listen to this Irish guy. You know, I only did it because I thought his accent was cool. Turns out he was a pastor, and uh, he introduced me to my savior, the savior that I needed. <laughs> so, how does that rank on the uh, skeleton scale? Let's put it this way, if it would have jumped out of closet at me, it wouldn't have scared me. Come on, let's eat. Hey, you know what Joe asked both of us to do this, man? Yeah, well, Joe's not around, is he? Just hand me a box. Man, don't even worry about that. Give me the box.
Joe, I need to talk to you. Come on in. It's about Lee. I don't trust him. You keep telling me that, but you don't tell me why. I like him, and I trust him. You trust him? Joe, the guy just got out of prison for killing someone. You've had a problem with him from day one. All right. Fine, Jeff. I tried to play this the nice way. But I'll tell you right now, I'm going to do whatever I can to protect myself. those things in any way. And as sure as I'm standing here, you will regret the day that I walk through those doors. Lee. I'm good. Um, listen, I need to talk to you about something. Is there any way that I could, um, could come over tonight? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. some guys there and one of them said something to my girlfriend so I said something to him and uh, we got into it pretty good and as he was walking away I followed him and I turned him around and I punched him as hard as I could and he fell to the ground hit his head and he died and I work in a grocery store because I've spent the last 10 years in prison I already knew about you being in prison how? sheriff's a friend of mine he told me when I filed a report against Vince Lee, this is your world now, with me. You're free. There hasn't been a single day that's gone by in the past 10 years that I don't think about what I did. I ended Tom Caldwell's life, and I will never be free of that. It happened. You can't change that. If you're going to have any kind of life, 
You need to forgive yourself and move on. Forgive? I would love to know what Tom's parents think about forgiveness. And I'd be very curious to find out if they had moved on with their lives. And don't still miss their son. I want you to have this. What for? A gift. Up for me. If I'm gonna wear one of those, I should at least be able to say I believe it. Maybe someday. tomorrow so I think I got a surprise for you that's gonna cheer you up unless I hear otherwise I'm picking you up at 7 a.m. okay bye bye I can't believe you did this I feel like a little kid again well good I wanted to do something special for you well you have succeeded <laughs> did you have any idea where we were going not a clue I don't know what to say, Katie. I just need a minute to take it all in. You do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's been a really long time. Let's walk down. Man, this brings back memories. Father used to do. You scared me. He grabbed me by the belt. You know, we used to come up here and we go camping in Canada. I miss those days. So this was a good surprise. Yeah. in the bag. You are not putting that in your house. No, no, I, I most certainly am. Maybe I was wrong about you. It's so beautiful up here. Some might even say romantic. It's very romantic. Did you know that uh, Niagara Falls is considered the honeymoon capital of the world? 
I did. Why? Would you like to get married? Lee? Katie, I'm 35 years old. I'm not gonna lie to you and say I don't think about getting married. What, does that scare you? Oh. I love the idea of marriage. At this point in my life, I don't want to waste my time in a relationship, but that isn't the least possibility. I know what I want out of life. I don't want to waste a single day. I want to make love to you tonight. Up here. Lee. That is by far the sweetest way I have ever been asked. But I can't. Hey, Lee. You're very special to me. You know that. But it took me a long time to realize that I was good for more than just sex. I just don't want sex to be part of the equation anymore. For how long? Until marriage. <laughs> you just asked me if I wanted to get married. You, di you did. Can I give you my answer now? You can joke about it. That's good. Yeah, because I'm weeping inside. Well, then this is probably also a good time to tell you that I speak to teens about abstinence. Of course you do. <laughs> My friend Maria, she is a principal at a middle school, and she's asked me to come speak to her kids. I'd love it if you could come. If that's what you want, then I'll do it. Yeah, that's what I want. Man, I'm looking for. Hey, what's yeah. up, Joe? Look, uh, is there any way you could close for me tonight? Oh, man, I can't. Katie, okay, I have plans. She's picking me up at five. Yeah. Is there any way you could cancel? I can close for you tomorrow. Yeah. Well, thanks anyway. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. See you tomorrow, Lee. Have a good night, Tina. She's picking me up at five. I thought you left. I did, but my car wouldn't. You need a ride? To the university bookstore. Ten minutes there, ten minutes back, I promise. We have to be back here by five o'clock. That's not a problem. No, I really 
appreciate this. You're a sweet guy, Lee. You seem to make it quick. I know exactly what I have to get. So what are you studying? Economics. Really? So it must be pretty good in math. Pretty good. I think it's mostly because I've never had a lot of money. And the little I do have, I want to make sure I use it wisely. Sounds like you know what you want. Oh, I do. Uh, what are you going to do about your car? <laughs> I have no idea. When do you stop dumping money into an older car? That's, that's a good question. You know, Lee, if it were nighttime, this would feel like a real date. You mean if it were nighttime and I were 10 years younger? If you were 10 years younger, I wouldn't be as attracted to you as I am. That is very flattering. Um, but I would appreciate it if you could be attracted to me on the other side of the car. Sorry I made you late. Well, it doesn't look like Katie's here yet, so it's fine. You got a way home? Eric gets off at 6, so uh, I'll wait for him. Get that car fixed. Hey. Hi. Her car died. She asked me for a ride. It's fine. You want to go grab my stuff? Yeah, Lay, let me, uh, let me talk to you for a sec, if you don't mind. What's up? I need you to be honest with me, Lee. Did you threaten Eric? Yeah. Come on, Lee. You're smarter than that. You can't do that. It won't happen again, Joe. If it does... You're gone. What am I supposed to do? I've got my business to protect. I didn't mean to put you in a tough spot. I'm sorry. Hey. You've been on edge lately. Is everything okay? Actually, no. It's not. You want to talk? It's just this abstinence thing with Katie, it's killing me. The more that I'm with her, the more I want to be with her. Give her some time. What's it been, a month? Let her get to know you. It'll happen. She's telling me not until marriage. Show her that if it's important to her, it matters to you. All right. We'll finish up, huh?
shouldn't be sneaking up on people like that. Sorry. I needed to see you. What, did your car break down again? No. I wanted to talk about us. All right. Tina, we've been over this, okay? There is no us. There could be. No, there can't be. Look, I'm in love with someone. Now, you are an attractive girl. See, but... you're attracted to me. Just give me a chance. I can make you care about me. All right. Need to go. Okay, so you're not ready yet. I can wait. Lee. How long can you? Hi, Katie. Hey, where are you? I'm about to go on. I can't make it. I'm sorry. But you got the day off. I know. Eric called in. Joe really needs me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I wanted to be there. I... I'll just call you later. All right, I'll talk to you later. So there's a new produce order that came in. I thought you might want to stop in the office and check it out, make sure it's all right. I already talked to Joe about it, it's fine. You sure? Lee. Sure. I'll talk to you later. So how'd it go? It was a good group of kids. Good. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. Are you? Yeah. I want to see you in action. It's just... Anyway, um... Got some steaks, and I was thinking about grilling them later, if you're not too busy. I'd love to. Yeah, I get off at 8. Maybe you'll actually show up this time. No, he was totally flirting with me. Yeah, his name's Lee. No, you wouldn't know him. He's an older guy. He was, but I think that's over. He said she was way too religious. Yeah, so, get this. She wouldn't have sex with him. No, I'm serious. She does some kind of abstinence stuff. Yeah, it's killing him. Smell steak. Hi. What's the occasion? What? Do you want out of this relationship? No. Why would you ask me that? Who's Tina? The girl I work with? Yes, the girl you work with. Who is she? To you. She's a co-worker. Are you sleeping with her? No. Why don't you tell me what this is about? This is about you confiding in some 20-year-old about our relationship. I never said word one to her about our relationship. She said my abstinence is killing you. Okay. It is. But I never said anything to her. Then how did she know? If you didn't tell her, I... then how did she know? I don't know. I did not tell her. The day you took her to school? 
Her car wasn't dead. As soon as you walked away, she got right in it and started it up. She came in and she told me that her car was dead. What did you want me to do, hmm? Ask her for proof that her car wouldn't start? Why didn't you come to my talk? I had to work. What don't you get about that? Convenient. I thought you left. Stay away from Katie. What's that for? Whatever you've been trying to do, it's over right now. You understand me? Lee, where's this coming from? It's over. You stay away from Katie and you stay away from me. Do you got it? Do you understand that? Did you get it through your head? What if I tell the police that you've been harassing me? Making inappropriate comments? Maybe I tell them you've been following me. Is that a threat? I believe it is. I'm a college student, and you're an ex-con. I will give you this, little girl. You do have a serious set of stones on you. Don't underestimate them. I'm pretty sure they're bigger than yours. Tell you what. I'm gonna call your bluff. Bad move, Lee. Do you think I really want you? I want your money. Not all of it. So, we can come to an agreement, or I can call the police. Make no mistake about it, Lee. I'm gonna get what I want. Yeah. Not this time, Tina. I owe you an apology. Yeah, you do. I'm sorry. I saw some things that made me jealous. And I didn't stop to think, hey, Lee wouldn't do that. And here we are. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you I was sorry. You want to come in? I was hoping to. I didn't think you'd want to see me anymore. Oh, stop it. We had a fight. It's over with. It's not a big deal. Thank you. So I gotta ask you. What did Tina say to you? I don't want to talk about her. The bottom line is, is I should have trusted you. Well, I guess that'll be my job from here on out. To make you absolutely secure in my feelings for you. I'll tell you something else. I love the fact that you're not in your 20s. <laughs> I love the way you look at me. I love the sound of your voice. I love the touch of your hand. Those lines you get by your eyes when you smile. You are a beautiful woman, Katie. How can I 
I make you understand how deeply you move me. Hey, Kenneth. Hey, Lee. Is Katie here? She's not. She called me from the airport. She said she'd be back next week. Next week? That's what she said. Did she say where she was going? She said her friend Maria was taking her on a trip. Is that it? That's all she told me. Right. Uh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, she left this at my house. you. Missed you too. I wanted to call. I'm glad you waited. Want to talk inside? Something to drink? No, I'm okay. So, how was your trip? Beneficial. I didn't deserve a phone call. I didn't know what to say. I can say I'm sorry. I know we crossed a line you didn't want to. That's on me. I don't blame you for that. I love what we shared, Katie. See, uh, that's one of the problems. That could never happen again. never happen again. And why would you say that? Because you blindly obey some ancient book? Blindly? <sighs> My past proves the wisdom of that book. You know, just because I did not live up to my own standard does not mean that I've abandoned it. You said that was one of the problems. There's others? Just one. And that is? Our religious differences. And 
turned back to the book. Let's face it, you're ending this relationship because I don't go to church with you. See, that's the problem, Lee. It's not about going to church. It's about a transformed life. I know you don't understand that. No, I don't understand it. You pursued me. You started this relationship. I know. I'm sorry. You're sorry. You had me fall in love with you. And all you can come to me and say is that you're sorry. I know. I'm just trying to do what's right. We're what's right. That's what's right, you and me. I don't, I, what do you want me to say? Huh? I don't get it. it would, I believe in Jesus. Tell me what you want. Is that it? Is that what you want to hear? Because I, I believe in Jesus. Just tell me what you want. I really hope that someday you can understand. I mean, I really wanted to avoid things starting to you know, escalate. So I figured let's just sit down and hammer things out. Please? I was just telling my friend George that two guys in love with the same woman should be able to work out their differences without resorting to, uh, I hate to even use the word, violence. Hey, truth be told, George seemed to think otherwise. Especially after I told him about our first meeting. You're not too bright, are you? <laughs> Yeah, why is that? You break into my house after I already beat you down once. <laughs> you caught me off guard. Is that what it was? Kind of like I just did to you. I'm gonna do you a favor, Vince. I'm gonna save you from a lot of pain. Katie's gone. She walked out. Well, this is embarrassing, then. I'll tell you what. Why don't we just call this payback? I want to give you one more chance to get out of my house. Do you know who you're talking to? I don't know, but I know I'm not talking to you. I'm sorry. You haven't met George. George, have you ever been in prison? I'm not that stupid.
Where you been? I'm leaving, Eric. Leaving? Leaving what? This town, this life, you. Is this about Lee getting you fired? Like, I can talk to Joe and get your job back. I don't want my job back, Eric. I want out of here. So what? You just gonna pack up and leave? And go where? California. You can't even read a map. <laughs> and you're gonna move to L.A. What did your mom say? She gave me $1,000 to get away from you. What about us? We were over months ago. I should have broken up with you then. No. No, 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 no. This all started when you met Lee. Eric, this has nothing to do with Lee. I've outgrown you. You play video games and watch TV. That's it. So now I'm a loser. No. I've just finally had enough. You'll be back! You always come back. I'm worried about you, Lee. You, you don't show up for work. You don't call. Nobody's seen you. What are you doing? I don't know. I, I'm sorry Katie broke up with you. I, I know you love her. I know you don't need this job. You certainly don't need the money I'm paying you. But I thought we were friends. I thought if you needed to, you knew you could talk to me. Hey, I have no idea what it's like to have spent 10 years in prison. I can't imagine what it must feel like to have caused somebody's death. But when you came into my store and we spoke for the first time, I saw this need you had to prove yourself. Remember? Remember? Yeah. You've made it through these 10 years, Lee. And you're home now. You can get through this too. For Lee Ferguson. You found him. Well, my name is Harry. I wonder if I could have a Listen, word with you. You're trying to sell something. I'm, I don't have the time. Son, I'm not selling anything. Uh, I just need to talk to you. Uh, I, I knew your grandfather. You know my grandfather? I did. Please come in. Thank you. 
What a beautiful home. I don't know if you know this, but my grandfather passed away six months ago. I'm sorry, he was a good man. So how did you know him? Uh, we corresponded a time or two. What about? Two old men. Can I get you anything? Could I get a glass of water? Sure. Would you like to have a seat? Thank you. I'll be right back. I told you, my name is Harry. No, I know your name is Harry. I'm asking you who you are and why you've been following me. My name is Harry Caldwell. Tom Caldwell was my kid. You remember writing that? I love my son, and you killed him, and I hated you. You know, it's a funny thing, I, I can't even picture him anymore without the help of a photograph. That's a hell of a thing for a father to have to say, isn't it? I didn't mean to kill your son that night. It was an accident. I know. It just I went. know. You're not a killer. The guy who wrote that letter is not a killer. You were just a dumb kid. You made a dumb choice, and it turned out horrible. And I hated you. You know, that hate cost me my wife, my business, my career, and it, uh, Well, the damn near killed me. With the help of that letter and uh, this book, I've been able to get to this point. Uh, did you ever read the Bible? No. I thought maybe you'd have read the Bible. Well, I've read it. And son, with the help of your letter and that book, I've been able to get myself here and look you in the eye and say to you, I forgive you. You may want to take a look at this sometime. There are things in there you might find interesting. Take care of yourself, kid. You know, nobody lives forever. Everybody dies. And you'd like to think you'd leave some sort of a legacy behind. Well, Lee, what I leave to you, young man, is the knowledge that I forgive you. And perhaps the day will come when you'll realize that a father can forgive anybody of anything. Look after yourself.
Wait, I, I, I can't hear you. What? <sighs> okay, okay. I think about the time we were parted and the distance in between is there a chance to finish what we started and find out what this means time is a wasting so they tell me it's so hard to say goodbye there is no time to waste no time to waste where do we go from here i can't feel a thing anymore I can't look you in the eye and as I pull you close in my mind I can see it all slipping by time is a wasting so they tell me it's so hard to say goodbye there was no time for us no time for us where does it go from here there was no time for us no time for us where does it go from here where does it go It's at times like these that it generally falls to a, a religious professional like myself to make sense of evil acts, to give an explanation as to how a good God can allow such pain. I can't tell you why God allowed this particular evil. He doesn't give us all the answers. What I can tell you is that the presence of evil does not negate the existence of a loving God. He asks us to trust him, to have faith. In this book, he has proven that he is faithful and trustworthy. In times of great pain like this, some may simply reject the idea of a loving God who's in control. By rejecting God, we haven't solved the question of pain. When we experience pain, we should call out to him. He longs to comfort us. You see, our God knows all about pain and suffering. For he is a God who hung beaten and bloodied on a Roman cross. As I sat listening that morning, 
I remember questioning the very foundation of my faith. I ended a relationship with a man I loved for reasons I thought were right. And then I lost him forever. I hope someday to come to terms with that. I recall a verse in the Bible that says, just as you do not know the path of the wind, so you cannot understand the ways of God. I guess he wouldn't be God if we could understand his every move. And I guess it wouldn't be called faith if we had all the answers. Now I must learn to trust. So I'll continue on this journey. I am hurting, and I still get angry. I don't pretend to know why this had to be, but I do know that my answers will not be found in running from God, but in running to Him. And in Him, I have faith.